What's up everybody, Mike Lazarecki here, and this week we're going to step away from doing all the gear talk, and uh, we're going to do an editing tutorial in DaVinci Resolve 16. Let's get into it. Now, a little bit over a year ago, I made the switch from using Adobe Premiere Pro as my primary editor to using Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve 16. Now, if you haven't heard of DaVinci Resolve 16, there's a free version that gives you pretty much everything that you need. And then there's a paid version, which is kind of more the pro version. Truth is, I really don't regret making this decision. It's a more efficient workflow for me and I really enjoy it. Other people really enjoy using Premiere Pro. And to be fair, I do still occasionally use both softwares depending on what I'm doing, whether it's for work or personal use. That being said, friends of mine that are also involved in this industry have expressed some interest in DaVinci Resolve. However, they always mention certain things that they feel like they're gonna be missing if they make the switch. So I kind of decided that I would make a tutorial series in the hope that it might clear up some of those concerns for anybody out there who might be considering making the same switch. So one of the main concerns that I hear the most often is that people won't be able to use Adobe's Warp stabilizer which is where in their software you're able to bring in handheld footage that's a little bit shaky and apply warp stabilizer and get nice smooth footage and to be honest with you this was one of my concerns as well because I know warp stabilizer works really good and a lot of times you can get almost gimbal level smoothness out of a handheld shot just by using warp stabilizer so the good news is this feature is also available in DaVinci Resolve 16 and I'm going to show you how to use it today so let's hop over into the computer and we'll get started on the tutorial let's go now, if you've been debating about whether or not to download and try DaVinci Resolve 16, the nice thing is that it's fairly risk-free. So if you head over to their website, you can actually download their software here. And if you choose DaVinci Resolve 16 rather than DaVinci Resolve Studio 16, DaVinci Resolve 16 is a free software. You can download this for Mac, Windows, or Linux, as you can see here, and it will allow you to take it for a test drive for an unlimited amount of time. And then if you find that you really do need some of the other effects that are available within the studio version, it's a $300 software. So it's, it's actually a lot less than your annual cost for using Adobe Premiere. But let's get back into the software. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve Studio 16. And uh, if you are not familiar with the way that the interface works, I'm just gonna quickly go over it so that we can understand what we're looking at here. Uh, for the most part, it's similar to other things that you see as other nonlinear editors, but it does have some unique features. So your different panels are going to be accessed down here at the bottom. So your media panel is going to be where you're going to bring in all of your raw footage. The cut panel is where you would make base edits and quick edits using that footage or trim your ins and outs. So here we are in your edit panel and within the edit panel here you see you have your timeline, you have your video and audio, and here's your source material up here, and your timeline playhead. Uh, you can actually click to select up here to have a double view, which would allow you to kind of see what your source clip looks like here, and your timeline clip here, which is similar to Premiere Pro as it is. Now the fusion panel is like having After Effects baked right into your nonlinear editor. The difference is, uh, Fusion is node-based. Moving over, we have our color panel. This is what DaVinci Resolve is really known for, is its color correction and color grading. The Fairlight panel is audio editing. And then in your Deliver panel, this is where you export your clips. And it, along the top here, it gives you all of your different format options, direct to YouTube, uh, H.264, H.265, generic stuff, Final Cut Pro, um, yeah, lots and lots of different options. Custom, you can go through here, add your file name, your video, audio, and file settings are here, and then you scroll down to make all of your customizations. And you are allotted all kinds of different formats in here. Again, we won't get into all of that right now. This is a tutorial for stabilization. So let's get back into that. Going back to our edit panel, we double click on our source clip that we're choosing and let's go ahead and scrub through i want to just scrub through where it's in focus here so it starts out of focus goes into focus and then i'm going to hit my eye and then set my in point and then i'm going to let it scrub to about here and then i'm going to hit my o for the out point and then if I want to drag this clip in, if I want to include the audio and the video track, I can click anywhere up here and drag it into the timeline that way. 
If I want just the audio, I can click that icon and bring the audio in. If I just want the video, which is what I want in this case, I can just click that video icon and bring that in. Now, if we hit spacebar to scrub through that clip, you can see how handheld shaky it is. And to be honest with you, the stabilization effect in DaVinci Resolve is very, very easy to use. So let me show you how to do that right now. One thing you wanna make sure you do is select your clip, and then you're gonna to wanna to go up here and click Inspector. Now, in the Inspector panel, you can see Composite, Transform, Cropping, Dynamic Zoom, and <gasps> Stabilization. There it is right there. It's already built into your timeline. What's nice is you double click this guy and down here you have your stabilization settings. Now, for this drop down mode, this gives you three different modes of stabilization. And what this does is it's gonna mathematically go through your clip and use those pixels to stabilize your footage in different ways, which are going to include perspective, similarity, and translation. The best way to use this stabilizer I have found is to just try all three and see which looks the best. Generally speaking, I start with the default settings. I'm gonna leave it at perspective. With my clip selected, I'm going to click on Stabilize. And you're about to see part of the reason why I love DaVinci Resolve Studio. It's so fast. When you click on Stabilize, it just rips right through that clip and you're already done. It's that quick. I didn't have to do any edits here to show you how fast of an effect this actually is. Now, if we play this back through, you can see we've now smoothed out all those bumps and hiccups and little jitters. Now, but what if we want a little bit smoother result? Let's take a look and see what we can do to smooth that out even more. So let's try similarity. Let's see what that does. You can see where that's still got a little bit of that human hand motion involved. And if we select translation and click on stabilize again, it'll go through and do all its calculations. Not much change apparently, but let's see what the clip looks like. Now that seems mm, pretty good also, honestly. I think perspective probably looked the best out of the three, just with the stock settings. Yeah, that's pretty smooth. So, not bad. So other settings that are available are this camera lock, which would be to try to have the camera be a, just a steady locked off shot rather than a moving shot. The zoom checkbox tells DaVinci Resolve to automatically crop our image after it's done its stabilization effect. So if we uncheck that and we hit play, we can see along the edges here that this black line keeps on kind of bouncing around. And that's basically how DaVinci Resolve has gone about stabilizing our footage. I can't see a world where I'd want to have that black box kind of bouncing around in there, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that checked. Now here's where you can control that cropping ratio. So if you increase this, it's going to increase how far it crops in, if it needs to. It doesn't necessarily do that, but if you go below that, it's going to try to meet your request as far as not cropping in quite as much. Now the smooth slider, that's how smooth you want this clip to actually be. So if we increase this to 0.5 and then we restabilize the footage, we can see that we've now cropped in further on the image. However, it is much, much smoother. Almost like it's on a tripod. And that setting you can put all the way up to one, which is the equivalent of 100%. And if you stabilize it based on that, you can see how far it crops in. So it's not super practical to do unless you're really in a pinch, but it also makes it like robotically smooth. So let's move on to a little bit more challenging clip. And this one actually has a little bit more camera shake and it's, it's a more challenging type of camera shake. So in our second clip here, if we watch this guy back, you can see right here we have some serious kind of shake going on and that's going to be really tough for any of these stabilizers to actually get right and make it look smooth. So if I select our clip and I come over here into our stabilize panel, we can kind of take a look and see what perspective is going to look like. Leave the zoom on. Let's keep perspective, keep smooth where it is and the strength at one and hit stabilize. Once again, it goes right through it real quick. And if we play this back, you're gonna see, see up there in that upper left corner, 
it looked like we got a lot of really bad jitter up in that left corner. So let's see that again. See that up there? The problem here is that this type of stabilization within DaVinci Resolve doesn't seem to work very well with that kind of quick jerky movement. So if we change over to similarity, we can see here that we end up with a much more pleasing result. Okay, so you don't get that crazy jitter up in that upper left hand corner. And this is where I keep going back to, it's all about a little bit of trial and error. Now, the nice thing is this tool is so simple to use, there's really nothing to it. You just kind of mess with the sliders a little bit and see so you want it a little smoother, but you can come down on the strength. We restabilize and maybe we take a look and see how it came out. It looks like that actually worked really well. There doesn't seem to be any of that shake left and we have a pretty smooth clip. So let's see what happens if we increase our smoothness up to about 51. Okay, crops in a little bit more, which we knew to expect. And it's very smooth with only a little bit of that sort of handheld drift involved. All right, so as you can see there, it's very simple to use the stabilization tool within DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, DaVinci Resolve used to only have the stabilization capability within its color panel, and the controls for it still live there today. So you have this easy access option here, and some people seem to think it's a different tool. It's not. It's actually exactly the same tool, and let me show you exactly how you can tell. Now, ordinarily when you go into the color palette, you are going to be met with all of these options that are wonderful for doing all your color correction and color grading. Uh, the node area up here allows you to make lots of really fine adjustments to your color. This is, again, this is what DaVinci Resolve has been known for for so long. But, so right here within this panel, you can also access your stabilizer. So let's say you're in the stage of your edit where you're now doing your color grading and you're getting close to your delivery and you decided that this clip is maybe just a little too handheld shaky for you now that you've reached this point. Well, you don't have to go back to your other panels to be able to stabilize the footage. You can actually go right up here into your tracker and within this tracker interface, you have the option for a window tracker, stabilizer, or tracker effects. Well, if you click on stabilizer, now you are met with all of those same options you had in the previous panel. So if we go back here, we can see you have cropping ratio, smooth, and strength, and then you have your perspective, similarity, and translation, then your camera lock and your zoom. If we go back into the color panel, you have Cropping ratio, smooth, strength, camera lock, zoom, and then here is your drop down perspective, similarity, or translation. So, this is exactly the same tool. And during color grading, you're also able to bypass the stabilization if you wish, which you can do in the edit panel as well. If we bounce back over there to bypass it, you just click this little toggle. And then you can toggle it back on in order to turn it back on. So, the nice thing is this same exact tool is available in multiple different panels. So should you choose to do your stabilization a little bit later in the edit, you are able to do it right here in your color grading palette as well. So you can select, like we said before, similarity seemed to work really well. And we brought the strength down to like 0.9 and the smoothness up to 0.35. And we click on stabilize and you will see that you have the same type of result as you had in the last panel. Now in my mind, one of the major benefits of DaVinci Resolve 16 is just how fast and snappy it is to use these kinds of effects. So if we go back to our original clip, for example, and let's say this time I wanna just go ahead and bring the entire clip in except for that out of focus early part of it. Let's bring that whole clip in and then let's see how long it actually takes to stabilize this footage. And then we'll compare it to Premiere Pro. So perspective worked just fine. And we're gonna leave this at its default settings. Let's hit stabilize and happened in about four or five seconds with a pretty pleasing result. Now, if we 
hop over into Premiere Pro and let's say we bring the same clip and we'll do the same kind of in point and out point. Let's see, it gets into focus about there. And let's just bring in just the video like we did on the last one. Let's look for our warp stabilizer. Let's drag that onto our clip. And let's see how long it takes for it to analyze. Once again, I'm just leaving this at stock settings. I'm not going through and adjusting anything. So while we're waiting for Warp Stabilizer to do its job in Premiere Pro, I thought I would just take a second and mention to you guys that this video is definitely not sponsored. So my opinions about DaVinci Resolve 16 are 100% my own, and believe me, I'm not making this stuff up. It is that much faster. Let's go back to uh, Premiere and see if it's done yet. Oh, looks like it's finally finished. Excellent. So that took Premiere a little bit over two minutes to be able to accomplish. And if we take a look at this here, we have some odd zooming that has happened along with it. And that's probably because we haven't changed any settings. So in order to get a similar result to what we got in DaVinci Resolve, I had to choose the method to be only position and smooth motion at about 50%. And if I play this back, you can see there's a little bit of a jitter in the middle there, but it gets roughly about the same kind of result as we see in DaVinci Resolve 16. Now, as you can see, DaVinci Resolve was able to stabilize that same clip in about five or six seconds versus in Premiere Pro, it took a little over two minutes for it to process and stabilize the footage. Now that's not to say hands down that one editor is better than the other. I don't necessarily believe in that kind of an opinion. Uh, right now, I think DaVinci Resolve is my favorite editor and I enjoy the use of it. The workflow seems the most efficient and the quickest to me. It certainly is a faster editor to use from the standpoint of processing, but I'll be honest, I do still think that there are some advantages to using the Adobe software as well, like the ability to actually export ProRes, which is not something you can do from DaVinci Resolve at this point. So there you go, some fast and easy to use stabilization for your handheld footage in DaVinci Resolve. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to this channel and hit me up in the comments and let me know if you guys enjoyed this kind of content and would like to see more tutorials on my channel moving forward. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next week. Later.